I'm Crystal K. Lyon and I am from North Augusta, South Carolina and I work here at the McLean County Arts Center. So I brought in a collection that I've been working on for a few years now of Southern Outsider art. Um, so it's just art made by folks who were not classically trained artists and they felt this need. A lot of times they had visions or dreams where they had to create or it gave them a voice and a way to communicate. So, so a lot of it's really rough and um, you don't see like the classical trademarks of shading and highlights and um, dimension but it's very much in the storytelling vein of folk art. So a lot of people are more familiar with folk art. And that's kind of um, what I look for when I'm collecting is a good story. Uh, I was at the High Museum of Art mm, 12 to 15 years ago and they have an extensive collection of Howard Finster's work. And uh, that's where I learned about Howard Finster and just fell in love with him, started learning a lot about his sanctuary that he created, the only folk art sanctuary in the world at Paradise Gardens and went to Paradise Gardens and visited that spot and just knew that I really wanted to collect a piece from him. So um, got involved in different auctions that are around the country, um, outsider art auctions and the Sloten Art Auction that's down in Georgia. Um, had that piece, my very first Finster piece, uh, Howard at age 37, um, and I purchased that from that auction house, and that was kind of the beginning of my collection, and it's just grown from there. So I think it was REM First who, they were traveling, they had done a show down, I think in Athens, Georgia, or they're from Athens, Georgia, right? Okay. So it's, it's very interesting that pop culture and like musicians were traveling around like when they were doing tours they were um they would go through these small towns and Finster sold his work off the side of the road and that's kind of how Michael Stipe and the band from REM discovered uh, Finster's work and they ended up using a couple of his images on different record album covers and so did the Talking Heads um, the same with R.A. Miller, uh, he, his work, which is mostly known, uh, the uh, Oscar Blow uh, image that I have one here uh, is on a couple different album covers. And um, so there's this raw kind of vulnerability and honesty with outsider art that I think musicians are really drawn to. And... Uh, and yeah, it just, it feels like something that would definitely connect with their music. Sufjan Stevens has also been drawn to outsider art. He did an entire album um, called The Age of Odds that was based on the outsider art of the prophet Royal Robertson. And um, so yeah, it's just something that a lot of artists are drawn to. So mm -hmm. yeah, so one of my favorites is Annie Wilborn and I think it's called Apple Tree Farms. And it's, it's funny because she paints this very simplistic image of this life on a farm uh, with all these people lining up to go for a ride um, in the back of a like trailer with a horse. But the woman that's riding the horse that's carrying the trailer can't drive. <laughs> so the people want to like be let out of the trailer <laughs> and then there's other people that want to jump into the trailer and Annie actually wrote on there these conversations almost like a comic strip that's happening between the characters and it just cracks me up. Another one of the pieces by James Harold Jennings is um, it's a ferris wheel and as the ferris wheel turns uh, there are some women at the bottom that dance up and down and so he is very much known for his mechanics and almost kind of like whirly gig actions where um, where one mechanism turning will make something else move and action happen and so this magical little dance happens and it's just so charming so those are two of my favorite pieces I love um, of course my Howard Finster which was the start and um, 
And then my parents recently got me a, a couple pieces from an artist that is still living uh, named John Anderson that goes by the name Cornbread. <laughs> and he paints, he um, paints a lot of wildlife. He spent a lot of time working as a ranger. And uh, so now he paints guinea fowl and foxes and raccoons and trout and all sorts of animals in their natural habitat. But it's uh, very flat again in nature, big eyes and super comic. So this work has really impacted me because of the sincerity of it. Um, these are folks that are creating to give them a voice, to, um, to explain their history and their family and their stories. And a lot of times they feel this urge to create it just because, again, they've been told by God that they need to do it, they have a vision, or they just need to do it they feel that creative voice inside of them. So it's not for money, it's not for, um, it's not for clout, um, it's not based on getting recognition from a school or getting into a school, it's, it's based on necessity. Um, and so that's what draws me to this work and that's why I wanted to collect it. And it really rings true to me um, because I'm an outsider artist. I'm not classically trained and so I get that desire to create just to create, yep.